Come on students, now we'll start problem number 27. So far we have completed 26 problems. Hope you got a good command on the chapter of liquidation of companies. We have solved the problems on statement of affairs and last so many problems we have done on liquidator's final statement of account. It is simply just like receipts and payments account. So now see the 27th problem. Mohan Limited went into voluntary liquidation on 31st October 2010. Its balance sheet. Remember the date? 31st October the company went into liquidation. 4,000 equity share of 100 each, 4 lakh. 6% dependent, 2 lakh. Secured loan, 1 lakh. Secured by machinery. So machinery was pledged. And sundry credit of 3 lakh. We assume unsecured. Land and building, machinery, closing stock, debtors, cash in hand, profit and loss account. Profit and loss account given on asset side is an accumulated loss. Fictitious asset. Ignore. The sundry creditors include <clears throat> 12,000 rupees as outstanding salary for 6 months at the rate of 2,000 per month. And also 2,000 rupees taxes payable to government. The sundry creditors are given in the balance sheet 3 lakh rupees. In adjustment it is given that Salaries are included, outstanding salaries are included 2000 rupees per month for 6 months The 12000 rupees outstanding salary So according to the provisions of Companies Act Salaries payable to employees are preferential To the extent of 4 months salary Not exceeding 4 months salary That will be preferential So here the outstanding salary is for 6 months The loss is up to 4 months preferential remaining is unsecured remaining unsecured the 2000 per month into 4 8000 the out of 12000 rupees 8000 salary will be preferential will take under preferential creditors and any taxes due to government that is also preferential so these 2000 rupees are also preferential so 8000 rupees salary 2000 rupees preferential 10,000 rupees are preferential creditors that will be deducted from 3 lakh that will be deducted from 3 lakh remaining 2 lakh 90,000 are unsecured land and building realized <coughs> 1 lakh 20,000 machinery realized 1 lakh 27,000 actually machinery was pledged mortgaged for taking a secured loan of rupees 1 lakh loan amount 1 lakh and machinery value is 1,27,000 so liquidator is going to get surplus from machinery 27,000 stock realized 1,80,000 debtors realized 40% of their book values liquidation expenses 3,700 liquidator is entitled to for a commission of 3% on assets realized including cash in hand and 2% on amount paid to unsecured creditor other than preferential creditor so we have to in working note we have to calculate liquidator's remuneration 3% on assets realized including cash in hand right so even the asset which is given as security that is also sold by liquidator himself so while calculating liquidator's remuneration we take into account the value of machinery also and uh, the amount paid to unsecured creditor other than preferential creditor so specifically given Preferential creditor ke upar commission calculate nahi karna, remuneration calculate nahi karna, only unsecured creditor. Dependent holders were paid on 31st December 2010 along with 2 months interest. Actually the company was wound up on 31st October and it is said that the payment to dependent holders were made on 31st December, 2 months. So this 2 months interest has to be paid to debenture holders. Then prepare liquidator's final statement of account. It's not at all difficult. It's very easy because all the points what we have covered in the previous problem, the same points are there in the current problem. So liquidators final statement of account receipts to assets realized. Land and building 1,20,000 given in the problem. Stock 1,80,000. Debtors 40% realized. The 40% of 2,20,000 received. Cash 5,000. Now surplus from fully secured creditor. Secured creditor was 1,00,000. Security provided is 1,27,000 machinery. So machinery 1,27,000 less loan 1 lakh, outer column 27,000. The total receipts in the hands of liquidity are 4,20,000. From this 4,20,000 he has to make the payment. The first payment is liquidity remuneration. Just you should write down liquidity remuneration in bracket working note. 
Don't take any amount. In working note, we'll calculate. Second, you have to take liquidation expenses given in the problem. Third, debenture holders. Debentures are 2 lakh, but it is given in the problem that 2 months interest has to be paid to debenture holders. So rate of interest on debenture are 6% given in the balance sheet. So 6% of 2 lakh into 2 by 12, 2000. So totally 2 lakh 2000 has to be paid to debenture holders. Then preferential creditors are taxes 2000, salaries 2000 per month into 4 months. Actually salaries are outstanding for 6 months. But we take only 4 months up to 4 months preferential. Remaining 2 months it will go to unsecured creditors. Already it is included. So no adjustment is required for 2 months. Only 4 months salary is preferential. So 10,000. Now unsecured creditor will take the balancing figure after taking, after calculating liquidator's remuneration. So jab tak ke liquidator ka remuneration nahi aayega, tab tak we cannot say how much amount is paid to unsecured creditor. Right? Now come to working notes. In working notes, liquidator's remuneration 3% on assets realized, 3% of all the assets realized by the liquidator are given in the problem. So 1,20,000 by land and building, 1,80,000 by stock, 88,000 by debtors, 5,000 cash in hand and 1,27,000 is the machinery. machinery. So total assets realized are 5,20,000, 3% of 5,20,000, 15,600. Now it is given in the problem 2% on amount paid to unsecured creditors other than preferential creditors. If this sentence nahi deta, to we would have included on preferential creditors also. We would have calculated 2% on preferential creditors also. But here specifically even not on preferential creditors. So 2% on amount paid to unsecured creditor other than preferential creditor working note number 2. Now we have to see whether the company is solvent or insolvent. Because amount paid as a percentage on unsecured creditors depends whether the company is solvent or insolvent. So total assets, 4,20,000, just now receipts we have seen, total payments, till up to this point, up to this point, how much is the total payment will calculate, liquidity of remuneration, 15,600 will take, and liquidation expenses, 3,700, debenture holders, 2,2,000, preferential creditors, 10,000, so total of the payments still up to this point is 2,31,300, receipts, assets are 4,20,000, Payments are 2,31,300. So amount available, net amount available is 1,88,700 is the net amount available. Now this will be compared with the amount of amount due to unsecured creditors. <coughs> unsecured creditor. So creditors are given in the balance sheet 3 lakh rupees. But in that 3 lakh rupees, we have already decided 10,000 rupees are preferential. In adjustment it is given. So 10,000 rupees we have segregated and put it under preferential creditors. Wo 3 lakh rupees mein se 10,000 rupees nikal kar hum preferential creditors mein le liye. To bachche wei kitne rengge? 2,90,000. To unsecured creditors are 2,90,000. Whereas amount available is 1,88,700. Amount available is less than the amount due to creditors. The company is not in a position to make full payment to unsecured creditors. It is called insolvent company. When the company is insolvent, liquidity remuneration is amount available into rate divided by 100 plus rate. Already in so many problems we have done. Rate is 2%. So 2 divided by 102. So amount available 188700 into 2 by 102, 3700. So 3,700 is the liquidator remuneration, 2% on amount paid to unsecured creditor. Now take this 3,600 in this calculation. Now add up 15,600 plus 3,700, 19,300 is the total liquidator's remuneration. Take, bring this 19,300 in the payment side, 19,300. Now easily we can find out how much is the final amount paid to unsecured creditor. Now debit side total 4,20,000. From 4,20,000 subtract minus 19,300 minus 3,700 minus 2,2,000 minus 10,000. So finally balancing figure you will get 185000 So 1,85,000 is the final amount paid to unsecured creditor. Actually amount due to unsecured creditor was 2,90,000. But the company doesn't have sufficient funds. 
तो इट्स अ लॉस टू द अनसिक्योर्ड क्रेडिटर्स इंस्टेड ऑफ टू लैख नाइनटी थाउजेंड दे आर गेटिंग ओनली वन लैख एटी फाइव थाउजेंड दैट्स इट दिस इज द एंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम नंबर ट्वेंटी सेवन प्रॉब्लम नंबर ट्वेंटी सी द ट्वेंटी एट प्रॉब्लम डिमिनिश लिमिटेड वेंट इन टू वॉल अंडर लिक्विडेशन वेन इट्स पोजिशन वॉज एज अंडर इश्यूड शेयर कैपिटल सिक्स थाउजेंड टेन परसेंट प्रेफरेंस शेयर ऑफ हंड्रेड इज फुल्ली पेड तो सिक्स थाउजेंड इन टू हंड्रेड सिक्स लाख रुपीज इज द प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल क्लास ए बी सी ए क्लास फाइव हंड्रेड इक्विटी शेयर ऑफ रुपीज हंड्रेड इज फुल्ली पेड अप बी क्लास वन थाउजेंड इक्विटी शेयर ऑफ हंड्रेड इज एटी रुपीज पेड अप एंड सी क्लास टू थाउजेंड इक्विटी शेयर ऑफ हंड्रेड इज सिक्सटी रुपीज पेड अप so we have three different categories of equity shares class a class b class c in class a 500 shares fully called and paid up 100 rupees b class 1000 equity shares on which 70 80 rupees per share are paid up and c class 2000 shares are there on which 60 rupees are called and paid up then unsecured creditors are 99000 liquid or remuneration 11000 directly given in the problem no need to calculate Assets realized to one lakh ninety thousand. So company is solvent. The company is in a position to pay fully to unsecured creditors. Then the remaining amount after paying to unsecured creditor, the remaining amount goes to shareholders. So first of all, amount should be paid to preference shareholders. Later on, it should be paid to equity share. Prepare liquidity as final statement of account. Now see here. Liquidity as final statement of account receipts. Assets realized one lakh ninety thousand given in the problem. Now payment side by liquidators remuneration eleven thousand, unsecured creditors ninety nine thousand. So we have receipt of one lakh ninety thousand assets realized and payments are to eleven thousand and ninety nine thousand. So we find out first of all what are what is the surplus remaining after paying to outside parties. So come to working note. You should not. You will take all these items afterwards. First of all in working note we have to find out how much is the surplus remaining. So calculation of amount of surplus assets realized one lakh ninety thousand and payments are eleven thousand plus ninety nine thousand one lakh ten thousand. So now one lakh ninety thousand minus one lakh ten thousand only eighty thousand surplus are left for payment to shareholders. So actually first of all the payment should be made to preference shareholders according to Companies Act. The amount should be repaid to preference shareholders. So preference share capital was six lakh rupees given in the problem six thousand shares of rupees hundred each. Six lakh rupees, but surplus we are having eighty thousand only. The amount remaining is only eighty thousand. So the deficiency five lakh twenty thousand due to preference shareholders deficiency five lakh twenty thousand. Still five lakh twenty thousand rupees are to be paid, right? Suppose if we have only one class of shareholders. Suppose if we have only one class of shareholders, the whole amount of eighty thousand would have been paid to preference shareholders. That would be the situation if we have only one class of shareholders. But here we have three classes of shareholders, so we have to find out how much is the deficiency and how much is the uh, amount to be brought by the equity shareholders, right? So for that purpose, we are calculating here what is the total amount due to shareholders. Amount due to shareholders, preference shareholders, five lakh twenty thousand. Here we have calculated. Out of six lakh rupees, eighty thousand rupees we are having. Surplus we are having, so five lakh twenty thousand is the amount due to preference shareholders. Equity shareholders A class five hundred shares into hundred rupees each. Five hundred shares are there, fully called and paid up hundred rupees fifty thousand. B class one thousand shares eighty rupees paid up eighty thousand. C class two thousand shares sixty rupees paid up one lakh twenty thousand. So total amount due to all shareholders seven lakh seventy thousand. Seven lakh seventy thousand rupees is the amount due to all shareholders. Now deficiency per share. This is the total deficiency. Total deficiency we are having seven lakh seventy thousand. Now deficiency per share seven lakh seventy thousand divided by three thousand five hundred shares. Five hundred plus. Ha. So amount due to shareholders. Preference shareholders amount due is five lakh twenty thousand. And equity shareholders, five hundred shares are there, hundred rupees paid up, fifty thousand. One thousand into eighty, eighty thousand. Two thousand into sixty, one lakh. So to total amount due to shareholders are seven lakh seventy thousand. Now we'll find out the deficiency per share. 
सो डेफिशियंसी पर शेयर सेवन लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड डिवाइड बाई थ्री थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड शेयर तो टू ट्वेंटी रुपीज डेफिशियंसी पर शेयर सो हाउ मच इज द अमाउंट टू बी ब्रॉट बाई द शेयर होल्डर्स डेफिशियंसी पर शेयर टू ट्वेंटी हियर विल मेक द एजम्पन दट द लाइबिलिटी ऑफ द शेयर होल्डर इज अनलिमिटेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दट वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग हाउ मच आई मीन कैश द शेयर होल्डर्स हैज टू बिन तो ए क्लास फाइव हंड्रेड शेयर आर दर हंड्रेड रुपीज पेड हाउ मच इज द डेफिशियंसी पर शेयर टू ट्वेंटी तो द शेयर होल्डर शुड ब्रिंग वन ट्वेंटी रुपीज पर शेयर हाउ वन ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी रुपीज इज द डेफिशियंसी एंड ही हेज ऑलरेडी पेड हंड्रेड रुपीज ऑलरेडी पेड हंड्रेड रुपीज तो वन ट्वेंटी रुपीज मोर ही हेज टू ब्रिंग तो फाइव हंड्रेड इंटू वन ट्वेंटी सिक्सटी थाउजेंड रुपीज ए क्लास शेयर होल्डर हेज टू ब्रिंग बी क्लास वन थाउजेंड शेयर ऑफ रुपीज एटी रुपीज पेड तो आउट ऑफ टू ट्वेंटी रुपीज इज द डेफिशियंसी एटी रुपीज ही हेज ऑलरेडी पेड तो टू ट्वेंटी माइनस एटी वन फोर्टी रुपीज पर शेयर ही हेज टू ब्रिंग तो पर शेयर वन ट्वेंटी वन फोर्टी रुपीज तो टोटली हाउ मेनी शेयर वन थाउजेंड इंटू वन फोर्टी वन लैक फोर्टी थाउजेंड सी क्लास टू थाउजेंड शेयर इंटू सिक्सटी रुपीज पेड तो आउट ऑफ टू ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी माइनस सिक्सटी यू गेट वन सिक्सटी तो पर शेयर वन सिक्सटी रुपीज दिस सी क्लास शेयर होल्डर्स हेज टू ब्रिंग तो टू थाउजेंड इंटू वन सिक्सटी थ्री लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड तो दीज आर द अमाउंट विच ए क्लास बी क्लास सी क्लास हेज टू ब्रिंग So this will be taken on the research side. Calls on shareholders: A, 500 shares into 120, 60,000; 100 shares into 140, 140,000; 2,000 shares into 160, 320,000. Now, amount to be paid to preference shareholders are six lakh rupees. Six lakh rupees is the total amount payable to preference shareholders. So the total will be seven lakh ten thousand on both the sides. That's all. This is the end of problem number twenty-eight.